Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the U.S. and I am here to bring you a delayed live paper crafting class. I'm so sorry and I apologize to all of you who, tip it, who usually watch on Facebook um, my, um, my streaming app. I found out during the last hour is not connecting multi-streaming um, type of programs lately. Uh, they're having some technical issues on their end. But I'll tell you, it put me in a panic at first. I'm like, how do I fix this? How do I even know if I can go live later today with my team? How do I know if I can go live next week? I didn't know what was happening. So, but phew, um, something that is out of my control and um, I'm just going to Cross my fingers that we can go live next week at 11 a.m. Central Time. But thank you so much for coming back. Um, thank you for those of you that went went on Facebook and found the YouTube link that I shared there and found us here. Um, thank you for all of you that uh, wanted to give this a go again. <laughs> so today I'm going to share with you a, a card that has some, some techniques that maybe a beginner wouldn't typically choose to do, but this is totally beginner level if you want to try it because I'm going to show you how to make it work. It's a very pretty card. I'm using the textured floral bundle, which um, when you hear bundle, it's either a stamp set and dies or it's a stamp set and punches in Stampin' Up! World. And so I'll be using the stamp set with the coordinating dies that cut out lots of the images. I'll show you that soon. Um, what else do I need to tell you about before we start? Um, uh, oh, I have a class. <laughs> I have a class that I'll be offering, well I am offering it, and signups end soon. The signups end on October 28th, so it's a class called the Textured uh, Floral Class to Go. So let me bring you to my computer. I'm going to show you that first, okay? Um, let's see. Technology. I'm still distracted, you guys, because I feel like something else is going to go wrong. Here is the textured floral class to go information. I posted it on my blog on October 20th. So if you're looking for that information, you can go to my website, which is Stamp Your Art Out. Again, stampyourartout.com. Um, you can click on blog and it will take you to my posts. Also, at the end of any blog post, so I have another one that happened right after I posted this. But at the end of any blog post are all my promotional and detailed information about news, Stampin' Up! News, Rachel Tessman News. Um, so you can always scroll down, find the information for what you're looking for, if it's still current, and click on it. So it will take you to this post. Registration is now open October 20th through the 28th. Um, I had such success with my layering leaves class to go that I thought, you know what, this is something that people want, let's try it again. So I have partnered with a Canadian demonstrator. Her name is Alana Wharf. She is a very good friend of mine. I love her completely. And she's been an artisan designer uh, type of demonstrator for Stampin' Up! in the past. So she definitely has some beautiful work and I'm so glad that she wants to partner with me on this. So we are taking this bundle and we've created classes, uh, a class I should say, and we've got peaks of all the six different cards that we'll be offering. Now, for those of you who have told me in the past, because I can only service people in the US with my product-based classes, but a lot of you had come to me and said, oh my gosh, I'm a Canadian and I can't take your class. Well, now you can, but you take it through Alana. And um, I promise you, it's gonna be the same because we're doing everything um, together. So sign up for her class. There is a link on my post. And um, yeah, it talks about what you get in the class. There's different options. There's the number one and the number two, so the full or the basic, depending on if you have this bundle already or not. There will also be the virtual, so it's just the um, instructions, uh, PDF and videos that will be available later on in November. And then we each have offered um, an option for our teams. You will notice a price difference, but that's because the Canadian dollar is different than the US dollar, but the value, like the amount is um, the same, I should say. So um, don't worry about the price differences. Canadian, you just have to check out what her prices are and it will make sense because of based on product um, prices also. Um, and I think then these are the details here. So it gives you ways to sign up for the class. I hope that you'll consider it. Um, we do have some spots uh, available. 
Okay, I'm gonna click away from that and I'm gonna bring you to my desktop now because I wanna share with you uh, the beautiful bundle that we'll be using. So I'm gonna bring you there now. These are the dies, this is the stamp set. If you already have it, then you probably wanna choose option two. So let's just find it in the catalog. I don't re recall the page number, but it's in the annual catalog. It's on page 65 and we'll just take a peek at it here. So if you have purchased this, you wanna sign up for option two, okay? If you live outside the US or outside of Canada, you can still choose the virtual option. So let's peek at the card. This is the card I'm gonna be creating today. I'm using similar products to what we used in our class. So if you take the class, you can then come back and you can, you, you can make this, all right? So is she on YouTube? Uh, gosh, I don't know. Um, I have to check. I will check with her. And if she's watching, you can respond, Alana. <laughs> um, let's see. What else do I want to tell you before we begin creating? I have to show you the PDF. And I've also got um, a couple other things I think I want to talk about real quickly also. I want to introduce you to Lisa Marshall. She is moderating for us on YouTube today. I'm not live on Facebook. Um, Trisha could not be with us today, and Lisa was going to step in anyway. So she's with us on, on YouTube, so say hello to her. Uh, she is there to answer questions during the live, because I don't catch all of them. I did catch that one, Rosie, but I don't know the answer. I think she does. I just um, need to find the link, okay? Um, also, let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, we're going to do a prize drawing at the end. So before we go to my computer screen for the details on this card... I'm gonna bring you to a couple of other posts here. Um, this is the graphic that goes uh, in, one, in my blog post lately because I'm connected with a group of demonstrators who are raising funds uh, for the American Cancer Society. Uh, it's a stamp out breast cancer event and I guess this is the 14th annual event. I have not known about it, but I got invited to participate because this year they are featuring the uh, Layering Leaves stamp set, which is my million, the one that I helped create, my million dollar uh, stamp set, my million achiever stamp set, and they're going to feature that. We're making, um, the demonstrators that are involved are making a bundled tutorial of different projects, and that bundled tutorial is going to go out to those people who are able to donate $25 plus um, towards the um, link right here. Uh, so your, your funds, 100% of the funds are going towards the American Cancer Society. If you um, donate and you live near Dracut, Massachusetts, you can actually go to this event at the Harvey, um, where's my mouse, there it is, Harvey Gaynon Harmony Hall. Uh, on 1600 Lakeview Avenue. You can go there on October 28th um, from 1 to 3. The event is being held and that donation will get you an entry to that event. So you don't have to do anything like signing up um, and then you can see what you get as an attendee. These, um, these graphics are on my blog so you can get more information. Uh, so what else? Let's go to, let's just take away these little images here. Here is the PDF. Let's dive into some stamping. So here's the card that we're gonna make. You can see that I have a couple versions of it. I actually made the bluish version first and um, then decided, eh, I'm not so sure about that one. Now, it, it's still very, like, I think it's a pretty card, but it wasn't one that we selected for our event. Um, the other three that are in this color combo just tended to work better. And so we're gonna be using basic white, Calypso Coral, Daffodil Delight, uh, for the cardstock, and then we're also bringing in some three color glimmer paper, which is one of the products that Alana and I are gonna use in our class. She's gonna be using the um, pretty peacock color from that pack, and I'm using the petal pink from the pack today. The Hello Irresistible paper is paper that we are featuring on many of our cards, and there you can see supplies. Now, I've listed the clear blocks. Normally, I don't do that, but um, those are the sizes that we're recommending for this stamp set in the class, so I thought I would just leave them there. I also listed grid paper and scrub and mist. Um, those are things that I normally don't list either, but they're handy to have when you're going to stamp. And I thought this way, those of you that are new to stamping, 
will um, be able to have a little more comfortable experience because you know all the things that you need, right? So I'm gonna move that away off to the side here so we can get started. I just have to have my computer screen up here. Okay, so let us go down to the desktop and we're gonna start cutting. So I had, for those of you that are new or those of you that haven't heard, I had some surgery on my hand here. So you're gonna see kind of a little scar on top there. It's going away. Um, it's, the injury is going away, but it's gonna take, like I guess it's gonna take three more weeks till I feel like it's comfortable. And then it takes another few months to go back to normal strength even. So it's, it's a long process of healing. And then today I'm having some kind of issue with my thumb. So <laughs> my right hand might be a little disabled while we create today. We're going to cut our cardstock in half. And this is our eight and a half by 11 thick basic white cardstock. So eight and a half by 11, cut in half in this direction would give us five and a half inches. So I'm moving over on my trimmer to the five and a half inch mark and making sure that my paper is flush to the top here. And I'm gonna use my cutting blade to cut straight up. I keep my cutting blade going in the same direction each time I move it down and then I push and I push and I push. I don't do the pulling and pushing. That way when my blade starts to create some frayed edges, I can just flip it around and use the other side to, you know, to use it up. And the blades are replaceable. You just take and remove them at the end of your trimmer here. There's like a little opening. And so you can just bring them in and out. Okay, now we're gonna use the scoring blade and I've marked my scoring blade with the word score. Um, it helps me to remember to not cut when I want to score. And now half of eight and a half, which is this dimension, is four and a quarter. So we're going to go to the four and a quarter inch mark, and we're going to press with our scoring blade. So now we have our cardstock folded in half, ready to go. I've also got a scrap of some of that basic white cardstock, and we're just going to cut a little strip. I want that strip to be one inches. I can either use this side of my trimmer or this side, because the trimmer comes with some inches on this side, which makes it easy for me as a right-hander to hold with my left hand and cut with my right, although my thumb's not working lately. <laughs> but there we go. We've got our one inch piece, and now we're gonna cut that to four and a quarter inches. So now I move into this side of my trimmer, and I'm gonna cut to four and a quarter inches. And basically, I just put four and a quarter as the measurement because we're gonna trim it anyway, so we can keep it this length. So there's another piece that we need, and then we need a scrap piece of white because we're gonna stamp on it, and we're gonna die cut from this. This is what, what, we're, what we're gonna get our flowers from. The paper that I'm using is the Hello Irresistible. This is the beautiful sheet that I'm gonna be cutting from, and I've actually already cut a portion from one of my other sheets, so I'm just gonna cut again from this one because it's two inches, and you can get three two inch strips from that piece. And on this one, I don't necessarily have to cut it at five and a half inches either, even though it says five and a half on the measurements, because we can just use the scissors and trim it up so it's perfect. So I'm gonna let that one sit over there for now. And then I'm gonna grab my Calypso Coral. I've already cut that one to size. Calypso Coral is a beautiful orangish pink color. I love roses in this color. It's my favorite color for roses. And it's already cut to five and a half by two and a quarter inches. So what we're gonna do is, I'm, or I'm not gonna cut actually, I'm just gonna show you that you can get one, two, three, and if you cut it even thinner at two and an eighth inches, you could get four out of one sheet. But we're using two and a quarter inches, so you could get six from one sheet of Calypso Coral. FYI, that's the only reason I brought that big sheet in was to share that with you. For this sheet, I'm cutting it for you because I wanna show you that you can get five inside layers from one sheet of eight and a half by 11. Normally we cut at four inches instead of four and a quarter, and we do a four by five and a quarter inch layer when we wanna put a layer on the inside of our card. But I'm gonna cut it to three and a half instead. So I'm going from the four and a quarter inch mark, three quarter inches back. All right, we're gonna do three and a half, and then we're gonna cut this one at, well, let's not do that yet, I won't confuse you. So then we're gonna cut in this direction, three um, quarters 
less than the full size card too. So here's the five and a half inch mark. We go three quarter inches back. That would come to the four and three quarter inch mark. Now, if you look at this, I'm just gonna show you this way so I don't have to cut the whole thing up. One, two, three, four, five. You can get five of this size layer from one sheet of cardstock. And when I bring the card back in, sorry, got it right here. When I bring the card back in, it's not too much smaller and you save a lot of cardstock, especially like during Christmas card making time, or if you're gonna make a whole set of something else, thank you cards or whatever, it will save you some um, paper by getting five out of one sheet instead of four. I hope that helps some of you out. We're gonna use our bone folder. So I'm gonna grab that and just give this a good crease. Okay, now that's gonna stay shut a little bit better. We can add this to the inside. If I wanted to, I could use one of my, this is my C size block, and I've got my birthday blooms for you. I could stamp on the inside, because um, it would go with this card. Where's my seal? But I'm not going to. Um, I'm gonna keep this one a little bit more general. The sentiment that's going on the front says, every thought of you makes me smile which could go for a lot of different occasions, right? So I'm gonna leave the inside blank for now and I can always come back to that card later on and stamp it. So, and you don't have to have sentiments on the front of your cards either. You can make your cards just picturesque and leave sentiments off when you create cards. And then when you want to, when you know what occasion you wanna use the card for, you can come back in and stamp your message on the inside. This stamp set, let's bring it in, has um, some options. So we have the every thought of you makes me smile with a grateful heart and birthday blooms for you. But you could supplement it. So again, you can choose your sentiments, they can change. Um, you could bring in a stamp set like Layering Leaves because that one has a lot of different sentiments on it um, and stamp your cards with that instead. So the other block, as I just introduced to you, the C size, here is the D size block. Here is the, here I'll bring a C back in, C, B, and A. So if you're wondering what, what I meant by that block A, B, C, and D on the supply list, it's just um, the way that we name the different size blocks we have and they go up. They, there's more than this. There's like E and F and G and blah, blah, blah. So we have other size blocks. Um, I'm gonna grab this one right now because we're gonna use that one first. I'm gonna open this up so there's no bending in my card. Here's the inside, here's the front, and I'm gonna stamp some leaves here. I've already kind of pre-planned where they're gonna go because I took my layers when I made my first card and kind of laid them out and designed, you know, so I know how I'm gonna position my leaves. But we have to put them down first. And we're gonna stamp them with an ink called Versamark ink. I know, the pad looks ugly, dirty, whatever. It's okay. Um, all Versamark inks do not stay pristine. No matter how hard you try, believe me. Um, they collect dust from the air. It's just, they're just, they're magnets, okay? So um, just know that your pad will still work even if it starts to look a little muddy. Okay, we're gonna stamp this down and I wanna make sure I'm looking at my uh, sample one. I'm gonna stamp it like that. So I've got just the tip of these two outer leaves off the edge of my card. One's going off the edge of the bottom and one's going off the edge of the top. And I would say if you wanted to be picky, it would be one quarter of an inch of the stamp going off the edge of each. We're gonna press that hard and I should have put this on my, this thing here. Let's see if it stays stuck. I don't, oh, it stayed stuck. Yay, look at that. Okay, it stayed stuck. <laughs> this gives you a little bit more even pressure when you stamp uh, over top the, um, Stamp and Pierce mat, this is the Stamp and Pierce mat. Of course, now I probably have a little ink on it, that's okay. We're gonna take and remove that stamp, and what we have now is a sticky clear ink that has been left on there. So let me zoom in, see if you can see with the lighting, probably not. <laughs> nope, my lighting is too bright, it's not letting you see. But let's do this, let's add the, you're just gonna have to trust me. Let's add the, um, Basic white, we're adding basic white embossing powder. This is one of the um, embossing powders that we use on the cards for our class. And 
you know what? Here's another thing. I always forget to use this too. This little guy called the Embossing Buddy, it is a nice helpful tool if you have fingers that tend to be oily. Um, I have the driest hands ever, so I don't have the issue that some people have where the powder will stick to certain areas because your fingerprint was left there. My fingerprints, I don't leave them, I guess. <laughs> So I, don't, I always forget to use that. But what you do is if you want to um, condition your cardstock beforehand, you rub with your embossing buddy on the surface. And it kind of makes, it makes like this protective layer that takes away all your oils from your fingers. And then you stamp and then you put your powder on. So we've got our powder on. Now we have to heat emboss to set that powder. It needs to set in place. You can see the image now, right? Okay, so we're gonna grab our heat tool and we're gonna grab our tweezers. So we have this tweezers that you push together to um, open and you let go to hold. This is part of the Embossing Additions Toolkit and it's awesome for um, people who might have like arthritis or, or you don't wanna get burned. <laughs> but it's, it's uh, ergonomic, is that what the word would be? It, it's very um, easy to, to use because I'm not even gripping it right now. And I'm just going to um, lay the uh, heat from my heat tool against it. In fact, I'm going to zoom out just a bit because I don't want you guys to have trouble seeing. Okay, so turn it on. <laughs> Thanks, Janet. <laughs> Allie, I don't know what you meant to write there. That's interesting. <laughs> so as I'm heating this, um, the powder is getting warmer and it's going to start to melt and then set. And you want to watch it because it can start to get shiny and then you can overheat also. And we don't want to do that. So I'm going to take and pay attention. There we go. It's starting to turn white. It's going from vanilla to white. And I'm giving it just a little bit of a wiggle as I heat emboss. And it's done. Oh, one little, one little spot there. There we go. And if you take and turn it in the light, you can see how the um the the shine might be different and if you see any parts that are not shiny then it didn't get embossed all the way so i'll grab my cardstock take that away i'm bringing in a tissue now and some ink pads we're going to use daffodil delight and we're going to use calypso coral and my blending brushes and i wanted to give a big shout out to um Teresa glow she's my assistant she comes once a week and helps me out. She took and labeled all of my blending brushes because I'm one of those people. <laughs> I have to have a, uh, a blending brush for each of my ink pads. You don't need to do that. You can just have like a yellow one and an orange one and a blue one. But I, yeah, I'm one that does not want to, I, I want to have one for every, <laughs> every color. So I'm gonna test the color on my grid paper and it's a little dark right now. So I'm gonna run it till it's a little softer and then I'll come in with my color over the top. And you can see what's happening. This is called emboss resist. So the areas that are embossed are resisting the ink. Not completely though, that's why you have the tissue. And when you rub over the top, you're removing some of that ink onto your tissue. So there you can see it's a little bit whiter and brighter now, but we still don't see the full leaf leaves. So we're going to take, and I'll just set this over here because we're gonna need that again. We're gonna take the Calypso Coral one now. And yes, I know. Oh, I have to show you this. I do have it listed in my supplies that we have the small and the large brushes um, available to you. Either one works. The small one will take a little bit longer to cover an area, but you also can do fine details with it. Oh, that's my pumpkin pie. I brought the wrong one. Hang on. Oh, here's Calypso Coral. <laughs> All right, so I'm pressing over the, the head part of my brush onto my pad, picking up the color. Now, because this one's a lot darker, um, thank you, Monica. <laughs> because this one's a lot darker color, like it's a more deeper color, I'm definitely gonna run it on my scrap paper to remove some of the ink, and then I'm gonna come back onto my card. And I'm just going right over the top of this corner and up in through here a bit because I want those leaves, actually I'll just keep going, 
I want those leaves to stand out all over. Okay, but they're hiding because I just added ink to the top. So let's do that trick again where you grab the tissue and you wipe. And now we're revealing the leaves. They're showing up. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I think we'll stick with that. And now let's do some stamping. So I'm bringing in a flower stamp. Um, this flower is, sorry, just putting things away here because we're going to make a mess if we don't. Uh, that goes in the wrong, that's in the wrong bucket, Rachel. We'll just put it over there. Okay, so we're bringing in our scrap now. This is our scrap basic white, and we're going to do some stamping. Let's stamp with the yellow first, and we're going to stamp a nice solid flower. So we'll press down, and again, I forgot to use my Stampin' Pierce mat. It's a habit that I have not developed, you guys. It should work okay, but when you use solid stamps, it's definitely better to have this underneath. It gives a more even look to your stamping. In fact, why don't we just test that out, because I have plenty of room here. I do have a score line going through here. I'm just going to peek to see where it is. Okay, so I'm going to stamp over here. Can't really tell the difference. That's because I have a really awesome table. <laughs> okay, next we're going to clean that off, which is why I listed the scrub and mist in the supplies. You don't have to have the scrub and mist. You could use a damp paper towel. You could use um, the chamois. We have these chamois too. They're purple little squeegee-like things. Not squeegee-like. They're like sponges in a way, and they help to clean off your stamps as well. So I've got my washer and my dryer on this one though. This is the stamp and scrub. Okay, now I have my flower clean and we're going to use it again, but this time with the Calypso Coral ink. So pouncing up and down to pick up the color, we're gonna stamp it down once, but we're also gonna lift it up and we're gonna stamp it down again. Because now we have a couple different shades of that Calypso color. So we have three different color flowers. Yay, oh, keep that open because we want to also stamp using our sentiment stamp. So let me grab that now. Our sentiment stamp um, is gonna go on our strip. So let's take our strip out and let's punch it first. When you're gonna make a, a punched or die cut piece, um, it, it helps to, usually with photopolymer, it helps to stamp um, after, but you could stamp before too if the image is really close to the edge of the, the punch or the cutout image. For example, with this stamp set here, these are photopolymer, just like I'm using now, but this image is really close to the edge of the coordinating punch, so you'd wanna stamp first and then punch. It's much easier to line up the punch or the dies afterwards if the image is super close. But in this case, I'm punching first with my, uh, oh, here it is. I left it over here with my banners pick a punch. So I've opened it up already. I'm gonna slide my one inch strip in here. And I'm punching first because that way I don't stamp too far to the edge. So I've set up my card, card stock for success here. And now we can take and stamp this down close to the left edge like so. And there we have our piece. Now had I done that and then punched, this little arrow part might have like been too close to the words. It's time to do some assembly, I think. Let me scoot some of these things out of the way. We have one other piece that I did not bring in yet that I have to cut, and that is our beautiful new glimmer paper that is debuting soon. So this is part of our online exclusives. We call them online exclusives, but that doesn't mean that you can only order them online. You can place them on any order. Um, this particular pack will be available, I believe, November, oh, I forgot. Is it the 7th? November 7th, I think. I didn't write it down on that. Okay, anyways, it's called the Three Color Glimmer Paper, and it has the petal pink color, it has this Highland Heather color, and it has, sorry, two sheets of each, and it has the Pretty Peacock. Gorgeous, beautiful glimmer paper. And unlike glimmer paper from some other companies out there, 
and I don't know which companies have this, but we did have this issue years and years ago. Our glimmer paper, the glitter does not come off. Like you can rub and rub and rub. You don't get glitter on your hands. So if you're one of those people that hates getting glitter everywhere, it's not gonna happen with this, with this glimmer paper. Okay, I'm gonna take a strip that I've already cut. It's a quarter of an inch in um, width, and it's just going to be an extra little embellishment on the front of our card. So we've got our pieces ready, except for our flowers. Let me go ahead and layer these pieces up. To do this, you can either add a strip of seal, or you could take like the multi-purpose liquid glue, which is easy to use. This is a great glue for people who, um, you know, are glue people, basically. And I've just transferred it to a precision tip bottle, and it does help because you can get into fine little areas with the precision tip bottle. Um, even with the multi-purpose liquid glue bottle, you can get in lots more places than you can with seal. I'm gonna add this to the left portion of this layer so that I have a little under an eighth of an inch showing on the left side here. And because I'm using glue, I have a little wiggle room. It's, it's, I'm able to kind of manu maneuver it until I have it right where I want it. And then I'll flip it over and grab my snips Sorry, I have lots of my tools over to the left today. So we'll just snip that and we'll stick that down over there so it's safe. Okay, so that's why I had it longer. I did write on the um, supply list that this is a quarter of an inch by five and a half, but you can totally do what I just did and trim it afterwards. So for this piece, you know, decide, because you have a six inch long piece, which, which area looks the best. You could even use that side if you wanted. We're just gonna put some seal on here. Seal adhesive is a dry tape type, type of adhesive. Um, for me, I prefer it just because, over the glue, because I am somebody who doesn't like to get glue on my fingers and I tend to when I use the multi-purpose liquid glue. But some of you are very skilled gluers and you never get glue on your fingers. For some reason, I do. I use the glue when I need to. Um, sometimes I'll use it for a whole card, but Oftentimes, I'm more of a seal person. Everybody has their adhesive of choice. So here we have our layers, and this can be added to the front here, but I'm gonna do something special on this. I'm not gonna put adhesive real close to this edge. So I'm kind of got my finger there. I'm just making sure that when I add this adhesive here, I have a little bit of a gap there. And that's because I want to be able to, to tuck my, um, boy, that was a lovely job, wasn't it? I wanna be able to tuck my flowers into that um, space. So let's bring this about um, an eighth of an inch to the edge over here. So we have a little bit of white showing on this side. Cards coming together and I'm still able to tuck under here if I need to, well, which I will. Okay, let's grab our paper now and I'm just gonna trim this part off because that's where I stuck all the pieces I didn't need. <laughs> We're gonna grab our tool called the Stamp and Cut and Emboss Machine. And this machine does die cutting, embossing, um, with embossing folders. Not the, not the heat embossing that I was just telling you about, but dry embossing. So embossing folders where you wanna like change your cardstock layer to be bumpy. Really fun stuff. So you get all these plates plus an embossing type of folder um, or plate with it so that you can do all kinds of great stuff. I have some um, sticky tape over here, which you can't see. Sorry, it was out of the camera. This is like 3M Post-it tape. You could use Post-its, sticky notes, 3M Post-it tape, um, but that helps to hold down our dies. So we're gonna set up our platform. So we've got the, the base, the die adapter plate, our scratchier cutting mat, the one that I like to use to cut on is always at the bottom. And then we need our scrap piece and we need our dies. And here we have lots of really fun dies. If we bring in that stamp set again, you can see that there's a lot of coordination in here. So we have these frame type dies that will cut out the images. I'm gonna cut out this one. We have ones that cut out the leaves. We also have more detailed dies that will do separate pieces like extra foliage and stuff. So let's grab this one and we're gonna lay it onto one of our images. And you just wanna make sure that your image is completely within. You lay your tape down, 
put your plate on top and crank it through. So we have, I'm gonna do that two more times. So while I do that, I'm just gonna talk about, we have this wonderful starter kit option. So if you're seeing lots of products that you like and you want to purchase, you might wanna consider getting the starter kit this month. The starter kit is normally in the US $99 plus tax. Shipping is free and you get to choose what you want in there. So you, if you have things on your wish list, you can add those things to your starter kit. It's a, just a different kind of order and what it does is it allows you to become a demonstrator, quote unquote, get on the demonstrator side of things and um, become a discount shopper. Most of the people who get the starter kit do it to become a discount shopper. They don't do it to sell, so don't ever feel pressure. It's so funny, I think every single person who gets the starter kit always says to me, well not every single person, but oftentimes they'll say to me um, on the first phone call they'll say, uh, I just want to warn you, I, I'm, I'm not planning to do this as a business. I'm like, it's totally fine. You're in the majority. <laughs> so I want you guys to know that it's fine. Stampin' Up! welcomes the hobbyist, the person who wants to get the discount. And again, the starter kit is on special. So instead of being $99 plus tax for $125 worth of product, see, that's a good deal, isn't it? It's even better. Right now, they're giving you 35% more in products, you get to pick like 168-ish or something like that for 99 plus tax, or you can have 35% off the kit price. So instead of 99, it's like less. I don't know the exact math, but I just know it's a good deal. And the reason why they're offering that deal is it's our 35 year anniversary. And we're celebrating. So yay for stamping up. Okay, we've got our die cutting done. If you want more information, again, you can go to my website and you can click on um, Oh, what is it? Join, not join. Um, oh, I'll find it. Hang on. <laughs> join the fun. Yes, it says join the fun. And then it tells you all about um, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So, oops, I clicked the wrong thing. There we go. There's my blog name. Alrighty. We're moving on. Here we go. We've got our flowers done. Let's take our card base now and this piece. Now this piece was added with dimensionals on one half. So I'm gonna take my dimensionals and everything is over here. Here's my really fun adhesive caddy from The Country Hive um, at thecountryhive.com. So if you um, are wondering why I keep reaching over there, it's because everything's all in that caddy, it's so cool. Okay, so we're gonna add dimensionals just to the back side of this spot here. I'm gonna grab seal adhesive and put it on this side. So I kind of want my, well I do want, my banner to be going from the edge and kind of coming up and off the, the card. All right, it gives it just a fun look or whatever. Every thought of you makes me smile. Okay, this is gonna be added about three quarters of an inch down from the top. Um, so I'm just using the lines at the top and the bottom of the banner to make sure that they're going parallel to the top of my card. And I'm pressing it down here and I'm pressing it down there. And then I can flip it over. And this is why I said you don't have to have it exactly four and a quarter inches because you're going to trim it anyway. So there's that. And now let's add our really, really pretty flowers. Our first flower that we're going to add is the yellow one. My fingernails aren't working today. <laughs> the yellow one I'm just adding straight on with seal. And I'm going to tuck that, and I'm, I'm using my um, finished one over here to kind of give me a hang on. It's, it's like my guide. Do, 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 do. Where does that go? Oh my gosh, Rachel. There it goes. Okay. I want it to look like the photo because I took pictures of my finished ones. All right. So that's going to go here. And then this one is going to go right next to it on top. And that one is positioned how? like this. Okay, so that one's gonna go here. And I did tuck it under my yellow one just a tad, not much, but like that. It's hard to see that one. I should have maybe stamped that one a second time. The one on my finished stamp was a little bit better, but that's okay. Every card is different with stamping, right? Yes, a sleepless stamper, there. Um, did I not have the, I think I have the link for her in my blog post, maybe not in the video thing because of all the problems we had going on, but I will copy and paste that. And then this one just gets added just like that. Alana's blog, by the way. 
the one I'm teaming up with to do this class to go. Okay, and then let's bring in, do, 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 what did I miss? I think I just missed, um, um, oh, they're over here. They're so pretty. These are the Blooming Pearls. They're in the mini catalog. So we're gonna grab them. And I think I have much more ease with taking and pushing with this guy here. So let me look at my finished one. I used large pearls in the middle of each of these, but if you wanna make a mass load of these cards, you could take and do large and small on the flowers. But I'm gonna go ahead and use the large ones. It's got a sticky end right here, and you just squeeze it every once in a while to get it back into a ball. This is the take your pick tool. It has a pokey end, it has a uh, sticky end, it has a spatula. It comes also with um, two styluses that you can change, interchange out here. Now let's grab our pink pearl and add a big one at the top here and a small one right next to it. And I have to hold it this way so I can line it up. There we go. So that is our finished card. And again, I didn't stamp anything on the inside, but that is optional. So you could totally stamp on the inside of that if you want to. I've got another finished card, and this is the blue one. So I made the blue one before I made this one. This was kind of like a fourth card that I was playing around with before um, I finished designing. And I like the idea of the embossed flowers on the dark cardstock. This is pretty peacock cardstock. Um, this is also from the same paper pack, the Hello Irresistible paper pack, same measurements on everything. Instead of using glimmer paper here, um, did we call it glimmer paper or did we call it, let me find it here, hang on. Um, oh, that's not it. Try, uh, three color, three color, <laughs> it's coming. There it is, three, yep, glimmer paper, three color glimmer paper. So. I use the ribbon because we're going to be using this beautiful white iridescent ribbon in our cards as well. And here I took and sh um, shredded it into little threads and then wove it behind the flowers. Here the ribbon is peeking out just a little bit. It's a half inch size ribbon, so it's a really good size, but you can make it thinner or really thin depending on techniques that you use to play around with it. And we teach you that in the class. And then um, this base is a coordinating color with Pool Party cardstock. It's, I'm sorry, with Pretty Peacock cardstock. It's Pool Party. This is Pool Party. This is Pretty Peacock ink. Uh, Pretty Peacock and Lost Lagoon is the blue on this designer paper. So I use Lost Lagoon on the inside of the card. You don't have to have the lighter color be your layer on the inside. It just needs to be light enough. And you don't even have to put layers on insides of cards, but sometimes it just gives you a focal area where you can sign your card, put your sentiment, put your note. Um, people love handmade cards, you guys. So please, if you're a beginning crafter, if you're watching this for the first time, I encourage you to give card giving a try. If you've been texting and emailing people for way too long, throw a card in the mail. And when it's handmade, you get to have your crafting come out. You get to do something fun and you get to bless somebody's life with a, a sweet piece of art from you. Um, so it's, it's really, um, it, it gives on both ends, right? It's, it's such a fun hobby. I can't think of anything, oh, the pearls. I did use um, the pink pearls from the Blooming Pearls on the centers of these flowers, and then I used the pretty peacock ones up at the top here. There's also this garden green color of pearls that comes with the Blooming Pearls. So, We'll be using all the pearls in the projects as well. And then the layer under here is Flirty Flamingo. I used Flirty Flamingo for the pink layer under there. So those are the different cards. Fun, right? I think I told you all about all the news that I had to share as I was teaching today. Um, I can't think of anything uh, else that I need to share. So I will let you, oh, we need to do prizes. We need, we need to do prizes. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm finishing early, which is great because, you know, I made you guys wait a whole hour. Those of you that came back, again, thank you so much. Um, for prizes today, we have um, lots of leftover designer paper from that Hello Irresistible from the last couple classes, uh, classes to go that I've been doing. So I'm going to divvy this out so that you have like 
five to 10 of various sheets. These are just four of the sheets. I think I have a few others. Um, so that will be prize and it'll be like enough for a packet of cardstock. Normally you get 48 in a pack of cards, uh, I'm sorry, pack of designer paper. Normally you get 48. So you'll have 48 sheets of something. Um, last week's prizes were uh, two blending brushes and a uh, simple storage from Tailored Expressions, which I get from Stampin' Storage. And I do have a little area on my website called My Favorite Things, and there are links to those products. So you can check that out. Um, I am an affiliate with Stampin' Storage. I'm an affiliate with Amazon. So when you purchase, I do get a little kickback. I appreciate that if you use those links. All right, let me share with you the prize winners that we have picked from last week's video. Um, those names have already been drawn right before the live, so I'll share those with you right now. And you'll want to reach out to me at stampyourartout at comcast.net if you are one of the winners. So we have Diane Johnson, and she was the commenter on, on Facebook. I apologize to the Facebook viewers who came over from YouTube, but we're not gonna have a Facebook viewer next week because we can't be live on Facebook today. So sorry. Um, but Diane Johnson, reach out to me if this is your, um, your, your profile picture and if this is the comment you made. And then we have on YouTube, we have Ruth Vorgel, or I'm sorry, Vorrell. Ruth Vorel, that's probably how you say it, right? Vorel, Vorel. Um, but anyways, make sure that this is you. Check your picture out and then comment. Reach out to me at stampyourart.comcast.net. If, like I already mentioned, um, products can only be sent by me uh, to U.S. people. So that's why my class to go, the product-based ones, are offered to U.S. Um, participants. And Alana is taking Canadian um, people for her class, so please reach out to her. The link is in my blog post. Um, but because I can only give product out to people in the US, if you are a winner and you're outside of the US, you can choose a tutorial bundle as your prize. Any ones that are available right now. Yes, congratulations to both Ruth and Diane. Okay, now I'm gonna go over to my YouTube streaming and see. Oh, the timing is awesome. Way to go there, Lisa. We have prize winners. We have today um, Patricia Toth and Bonnie Blake. Congratulations to you both. You are the winners for the live. So you're gonna get an assortment of um, Hello Irresistible papers. It won't be the full pack. It will be um, multiples of several sheets though. So the advantage to that is, and I'm just gonna click away from that for now. Um, the advantage to that, reach out to me by the way, um, is that you can make multiple cards, right? You don't have to buy lots of packs of designer paper to make multiples of the same cards. So hopefully you can put good use to those car, uh, to those sheets of paper. And I think that's it. So I'm gonna let you guys go. Let's give a big thank you to Lisa Marshall who hung in there and um, commented along with many of you. She like kept you all going for a while there trying to tell you that the technology, we were having issues with connectivity, and and she came back. So thank you, Lisa, and thank you to all of you who came back. Thank you to any new viewers. Thank you to my viewers that have been around with me. If you are a, um, a new viewer, please click like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, follow me, and I wish you all well. We'll see you next week when I go live. That will be Wednesday, November 1st at 11 a.m. Central Time hopefully blogging or, or I'm sorry, streaming to both YouTube and Facebook. And I have next week, what is next week? Um, oh, what is my project? I think I already have it picked out. So I can even kind of give you a little hint. Sometimes I don't, but this time I do. I'm using some new products that are gonna debut along with that glimmer paper. I'm using Meandering Meadows designer paper next week. So hope you can come back. Those of you that have been asking about my uh, uh, paper pumpkin video, it should have been today, but I really wanted to talk about this class because it is amazing and I hope that you'll consider signing up. Um, but my paper pumpkin video is gonna be pre-recorded and it will go onto um, my YouTube channel and hopefully by Friday. So sorry for the delay on that for those of you that were waiting. All right, let y'all go now. Thanks everyone. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.